Coucou tout le monde, c'est Madame Sherman ici. Hi everyone, it's Miss Sherman here. And today we're going to be carrying on from our last video where in which we started looking at the photo card element of your speaking exam. So last time we established that in your preparation time for your speaking exam, you will be given a photo card upon which there will be three questions that you get to prepare before you go into the exam you'll be able to then read your answers to these prepared questions. The first question is always qu'est-ce qu'il y a sur la photo? See if you can remember what that means. We went through it in the last video. So that means what is on the photograph and I taught you how to go through palm, describing people, action, location and mood in order to structure a response to that question. Today we're going to be moving on to one of the other types of questions and this is on the foundation paper. Okay, so uh, this is going to be most useful for foundation students really. Um, and that is the tense question. So they always try to um, elicit the use of another tense from you so that the examiner um, can assess you on your ability um, to talk in the past or future tenses. So here you will see in this example that the second question is, is an example of a tense question. Tu voudrais changer le menu dans ton collège? Would you like to change the menu in your school? Pourquoi? Pourquoi pas? Why or why not? Voudrais, would like is the conditional tense. Okay, so it's a form of the future tense. So let's have a look again at the criteria um, for the photo card. So to get 13 to 15 marks across all of the questions, you need to make sure that you have replied to the questions clearly and that you develop most answers that you also give and explain an opinion. So notice again that it does not say here we have to use complicated language. We don't have to avoid repetition. Okay, so we can afford to be quite basic with our language and in fact it's probably important to be, it's probably better to be a bit basic with our language but to make sure our answers are clear than to attempt to use really complex structures um, which aren't clear because we aren't grammatically forming them correctly. So I'm going to give you some simple structures to learn for the tense question of your photo card in this video. Before we get started, these are the seven, um, right, I've just realised there are seven, this is so annoying, <laughs> um, there are seven French phrases and there are, oh no, there are also seven English phrases. Sorry guys, I am tired. Je suis fatiguée. Uh, je, je suis nul en maths. Okay, I'm not very good at maths. So, um, now that embarrassing uh, mistake is over. What? No, we like mistakes. We do like mistakes. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent now. I would like you to match up the English and the French, please. So just on a sheet of paper or on Word, match up the French and the English question phrases um, because these will be useful for today's lesson. So we have to have them ready in our heads. Okay, pause me now. Rebonjour, hi again, hopefully you've unpaused me. Um, so let's go through those answers then. So number one, qu'est-ce que is what? And number two is also what? So qu'est-ce que and que both mean what? But qu'est-ce que means, li is literally, what is it that? So if I was to say, qu'est-ce que tu aimes faire le weekend? I'd literally be saying, what is it that you like to do at the weekend? Which kind of makes sense, but it's quite a long-winded way of saying what, isn't it? And number two, que, um, is a shorter form of that. Number three, est-ce que, est-ce que. So I've put here that it means do. It doesn't always mean do, so don't take that as gospel. But the literal translation is, is it that? So I was, if I were to say, est-ce que tu aimes le français? Is it that you like the French? Again, that kind of makes sense, but it's a long-winded way of saying, do you like French? Number four, those four variations of quel all mean which, and the, very, the spelling varies in French depending on whether um, the um, 
noun is uh, masculine, feminine, or plural. <clears throat> okay, so number five, où means where. So, for example, où habites-tu? Where do you live? Number six, pourquoi? Pourquoi? Why? Literally, for what? Because quoi can also mean what. Um, and number seven, comment? Comment? Comment means how, and you might say, but comment tu t'appelles means what's your name? Well, actually, comment tu t'appelles literally means how do you call yourself? So comment means how, although sometimes we translate it as what in certain phrases in English. These phrases are also going to be useful for you to remember. You'll have come across them in class before, but they are the type of phrases that get mixed up a lot. So make sure you've written these down before we carry on. So dernier and dernière both mean last. That is the masculine and feminine form of last. So if I was to say, if I were to say, pardon, le week-end dernier, that would be last weekend. If I was to say la semaine dernière, that would be last week. Prochain and prochaine both mean next. So be careful here um, because there is a difference in the pronunciation. Prochain, prochaine. Dernier, dernière. Prochain is the masculine form. Prochaine is the feminine form. Now, the way that I teach my students to remember the difference between uh, last and next, prochain, we've got the word pro in there. Pro is like going forward, isn't it? Um, so therefore, going forward is the future. And then if we have a look at dernier, um, girls will, well, some girls will get this one. Maybe some guys as well. Sorry, that was bad of me. Um, whoever wears tights will understand this. So tights, depending on how thick they are, have a certain dernier. And I think if you have like five dernier, I think you can get five dernier, maybe eight, five dernier tights, they're not going to last you very long because they're very thin. Yeah, so five dernier tights are thin and then the bigger the number, the thicker they get. So like 40 dernier are quite strong. So they would they would last you a long time, but five dernier tights would not last a long time. So that is how you might, it might help you remember last and next. If you don't wear tights, then just ignore me. I've gone on a math massive tangent there. Okay, moving on then. Oh, and also pour. Pour, you might have seen as meaning for, but it also means in order to. So, for example, pour... Um, I'm trying to think of an example now. Uh, pour manger un croissant... Il faut acheter un croissant. In order to eat a croissant, you have to buy a croissant. That is a ridiculous example, but there we go. Okay, so I have now split the different tense questions into subsections. So I've had a look through all the uh, past photocard questions and I've had a look at the type of tense questions that come up. So the first question I have described as the would you like question, okay? Um, so we saw this in the example question at the beginning. I've got the question type there on the left. And then in the second column, I've got the trigger phrase. So the trigger phrase basically means the phrase you'll see in the question that then triggers you to know what the question type is and how you can go about using a structure to respond to that question type. Okay, so for the would you like question, you might see tu voudrais, or again, it might be the other way around, voudrais-tu, which means would you like. And again, another way of saying that in French is tu aimerais or aimerais-tu. Totally interchangeable, they both mean the same thing. So here are some examples that are in the third column that I found of the conditional tense sorry, of the tu, would you like question. So first one, tu voudrais changer le menu dans ton collège? Would you like to change the menu in your school? The second one, où voudrais-tu habiter à l'avenir? Where would you like to live in the future? Okay, remember we looked at that word où in the starter task. And qu'est-ce que tu aimerais faire après tes examens? What is it that you would like to do after your exams? Or simply, what would you like to do after your exams? So I've put some example structures here of how you could go about responding to these and these are recyclable okay so if you get a would you like question you're going to answer it using the 
structure in bold and changing the rest of the words to make it relevant to your question. So, for example, Tu voudrais changer le menu dans ton collège? Would you like to change the menu in your school? Oui, je voudrais changer le menu parce que... Yes, I would like to change the menu because... And then you give a reason. Or you could say... Non, je ne voudrais pas changer le menu parce que... Because... And give a reason. I've just noticed that my uh, bullet points aren't lined up very well, but I'm sure you can cope. So the second example question of... Où voudrais-tu habiter à l'avenir? Goes with the third example response structure. À l'avenir. So what I've done is I've taken that time phrase, which is right at the end of the question, and I've put it at the start of my response. So à l'avenir, which is in the future... Je voudrais, so we're going to use je voudrais again, which is I would like, habiter en France, to live in France, parce que, because, and then you add a reason. Qu'est-ce que tu aimerais faire après tes examens? And then the response, après mes examens, careful here, because in the question, the question says après tes examens after your exams and quite often students will when they're in a hurry and they write their response they'll write après tes examens they'll copy it from the question but that would mean after your exams I would like to go that doesn't make sense we need to say after my exams so te in the response changes to me my après mes examens je voudrais aller I would like to go and then you can say where you'd like to go and then parce que because and give a reason. So those are some different ways of answering the tu voudrais question. I would make a note of those on flashcards. Next one, the future tense question. So you may see one of these trigger phrases, l'année prochaine, we know that prochaine, pro going forward means next, année is year, next year. Cette année means this year, okay? So we could answer those in a very similar way. There's just a slight difference in meaning between the two. Second trigger phrase, le week-end prochain, okay? Next weekend or ce weekend, which means this weekend. And then finally, we've got septembre prochain, September next. So next September. Example questions. So I found these three questions. Tu vas aller où en vacances l'année prochaine? Where are you going to go on holiday next year? The second uh, bullet point says, Quel sport vas-tu faire le weekend prochain? Which sport are you going to do next weekend? Okay, which sport are you going to do? And finally, Qu'est-ce que tu vas faire en septembre prochain? What are you going to do next September? So, here are some example uh, responses. So, for that first question, Tu vas aller où en vacances l'année prochaine? We've got the time phrase, so l'année prochaine. And then we've got je vais aller. And I'm going, I would suggest using this set phrase, je vais aller, for whatever future tense question you get. Okay, and then modifying the rest to make it fit your question. So, je vais aller is I'm going to go. So, l'année prochaine, je vais aller en France pour visiter la plage. So, pour, we know, is in order to. So, next year, I'm going to go to France in order to visit the beach. Let's have a look at that second question. We're using exactly the same structure here. Le week-end prochain, je vais aller au parc pour jouer au foot. Next weekend, I'm going to go. So, je vais as I am going and aller is to go. Au parc, to the park, pour, in order to, jouer au foot, to play football. Okay? That third answer to what you're going to do in next September, sorry, next September, we've written en septembre, in September, je vais aller, again, I am going to go, au lycée, pour étudier. So I'm going to go to college in order to study, and then you can write what you're going to study. Um, now, you might be tempted to stay, say, you, you know, I don't want to use aller. Well, if you feel confident in knowing how to say, for example, I am going to study um, French at college, that would be great. But if you have a mind blank in the exam and can't remember the verb to study, then aller is a good one to go to. And again, remember the mark scheme doesn't mention anything about um, being penalised for repetition. Okay, you, you you can repeat yourself. You can use simple structures as long as it is clear and there is some element of detail. 
So if we look back at the would you like question, our um, key recyclable structures there that we can use in, in, in these um, responses are je voudrais, I would like, or je ne voudrais pas, I wouldn't like, and then a reason, parce que. For the future tense question, we've got je vais aller, I'm going to go, and then pour, in order to, and then whatever you're going for. Um, you might also add ce sera, you know, it will be, and add an opinion phrase. Okay, so then we've got the past tense question, and here are your trigger phrases. So we've got récemment, meaning, meaning recently, une visite récente, a recent visit, l'année dernière, last year. So these are all examples of phrases that have been used in past photocard questions for the tense question. La semaine dernière, last week, le week-end dernier, you should be getting used to these now, last weekend. And then le dernier dot 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 que tu as. So, for example, um, oh, I've just seen I've messed this up. My example questions don't match with my trigger phrases. Oh, well. Uh, so, for example, on one um, uh, past paper question, it was le dernier film que tu as vu. Quel était le dernier? Quel, oui, quel était le dernier film que tu as vu? What was the last film that you watched? Yeah, and then we've got hier, which is yesterday. So if any of those are new to you, I would make a note of those and make sure you learn them. Here we've got our example questions then. So if you had, um, tu es allé à un, fil, uh, à un mariage récemment? Uh, did you, have you been to a wedding recently? Um, this is the phrase, uh, this is the structure we're going to use. So l'année dernière, which is last year. So in the question it said récemment. So I could have just said récemment in my response. There sh also shouldn't be a full stop after l'année dernière. There should be a comma. Um, <clears throat> so we could have just repeated récemment, sorry. Um, but that's a little bit boring. Um, so I've just chosen to show that I understand the meaning of récemment by choosing a more specific time phrase, last year. So l'année dernière, je suis allé à l'église avec ma famille. I went to the church with my family pour fêter in order to celebrate le mariage de mon oncle, the wedding of my uncle. Ah, I've just seen that mariage has been auto-corrected to the English version. There is only one R in mariage and I can't even change that now. Oh no, I can. Hang on, let me change it. Voila. Oh no, I can't. Sorry, I did try. I tried. It wouldn't work. So, uh, next one. So if we're going to look at la semaine dernière, we could say, um, so, uh, sorry, if we to look at the second question, décris-moi une visite récente au cinéma, should be an accent on that E of cinema. Uh, describe for me a recent visit to the cinema. Again, I'm being specific with my time phrase and I'm using la semaine dernière, last week. Remember, this doesn't have to be true. You just have to say something which is understandable. Um, so if you want, if, you know, yesterday you watched a film, but you can't remember the word for yesterday, then use the word for last week, la semaine dernière, even if it isn't true. Normally I would tell you to always tell the truth, but here it's allowed. So la semaine dernière, je suis allé, I went, au cinéma, to the cinema, avec mon ami, pour regarder Wonka. So again, we've got the same structure. We've got our time phrase and we've got je suis allé, which is I went. And then we've got the location we went to. We've got avec to add that extra bit of detail, who we went with. You could also have done this for the future tense question. And then we've got our in order to, pour, and our infinitive. So here we've got regarder, and then the film that we're going to watch. Again, we've got the same structure um, for question three. Did you do work experience last year? L'année dernière, je suis allée à une école primaire pour faire mon stage. Last year, I went to a primary school to do my work experience. You may well look at that question, tu as fait un stage l'année dernière, and the natural way to respond to it would be, last year, um, I worked in a primary school for my work experience. Now, if you know how to say uh, primary school, amazing. Uh, sorry, if you know how to say I worked, j'ai travaillé, amazing. But if you're not too sure on tenses, our go-to phrase is going to be je suis allé. So you need to think of a way that you can um, use I went to talk about your work experience. And I think this one's quite uh, works quite well.
So next question, quel sport as-tu fait la semaine dernière? So the answer we've got here is again, we start with our um, time phrase and this time we've copied it directly from the question. La semaine dernière, je suis allé, which means I went au parc pour jouer in order to play au foot avec ma soeur. And again, we've added avec there for that bit of extra detail. Um, Qu'est-ce que tu as recyclé le week-end dernier? What did you recycle last weekend? Exciting question. So, again, it might be tempting to say last weekend I recycled paper. However, it might be difficult for you to um, put I recycled into French, j'ai recyclé, if you're not too sure on grammar. Therefore, just use je suis allé. So, le week-end dernier, je suis allé. Last weekend, I went au centre de recyclage, to the recycling centre. Okay, so that's a nice way around it, saying you went to the recycling centre. It's a place that you recycle. Avec mon père pour recycler le papier. Of course, I was toying with the idea of putting je suis allé dans la cuisine. I went to the kitchen because that's where I do my recycling. But I think that sounds a bit weird. Last weekend, I went to the kitchen to do my recycling. Yeah, you wouldn't. It, it's not very natural, is it? So, je suis allé au centre de recyclage is grammatically very good, um, even if, um, accurate, sorry, even if it's not true. Quel est le dernier film que tu as vu? What is the last film that you saw? So again, we've got our time phrase here. Hier, je suis allé, I went chez une copine to a friend's house pour regarder in order to watch Twilight. And we could also add on the end of all of those to add even more detail, Sete, C apostrophe E, acute accent, T A I T, it was, and either a positive or negative adjective and a reason. So here's our structure for this one then. Past tense phrase, then as je suis allé, I went, then saying where we went, avec, saying who we went with, pour, in order to, and our infinitive, in order to what, to do. Okay, brilliant. Now, finally, we've got the pour question, and I've just gone through how we can do a pour response to any past or future tense question. Um, pour meaning in order to, but some questions will have the word pour in anyway. So, for example, uh, uh, you might have, let's look at the first example question here. Qu'est-ce que tu as fait pour fêter ton anniversaire l'année dernière? What is it that you did to in order to celebrate your birthday last year? What did you do to celebrate your birthday last year? So the example response structure could be l'année dernière. So we've got our past tense phrase there. Je suis allé, I went au restaurant avec mes amis pour fêter mon anniversaire. Just like the structure I, I recently taught you. So qu'est-ce que tu vas faire pour fêter ton anniversaire cette année? This time we've got the future tense because it's this year. What are you going to do to celebrate your birthday this year? And of course this... V oh. This v is a clue as well. We've um, in va um, that you know with je vais again. We, we see that v occurring, and that's for the future tense. If you think about it, v is towards the end of the alphabet, and if you think about the alphabet as a timeline, it's like point v would be pointing towards the future. Again, it might not work for you, but that visual works for me. So, example response structure. Again, we're taking that time phrase from the end of the question. Cette année. Je vais aller, I'm going to go, au cinéma avec ma famille pour fêter mon anniversaire. This year, I'm going to go to the cinema with my family in order to celebrate my birthday. And finally, qu'est-ce que tu as fait récemment pour rester en forme? What is it that you have done recently in order to stay in shape? What have you done recently to stay in shape? So again, I've changed récemment to a more specific time phrase. La semaine dernière... Je suis allé. this person is a girl because there is an extra E on the end, au parc avec mes amis pour jouer au foot. So I went to the park with my friends in order to play football, but to make sure that it um, links back to the question, I've put et resté en forme and stay in shape. I could have just said la semaine dernière je suis allé au parc avec mes amis pour rester en forme. Last week I went to the park with my friends in order to stay in shape, but... We've not actually been specific that we're going to the park to exercise, so, so, so that link doesn't quite work without the pour jouer au foot. There we go. So here is our example question. 
Um, and it is, tu voudrais changer le menu dans ton collège? Pourquoi? Pourquoi pas? Would you like to change the menu in your college? Why or why not? And I have written non, should be a comma after non. Je ne voudrais pas changer le menu dans mon collège. And note, I have changed ton, which is your, to mon, which is my. Parce que je pense que c'est délicieux. Because I think that it's delicious. And then again, it's detail that we need here. So, not loads of detail, but maybe, you know, three or four lines for each question. I've added an example here so that I can show off a different tense. Par exemple, hier j'ai mangé une pizza et c'était trop bon. For example, yesterday I ate a pizza and it was too good. But you don't have to do that. So, I'm going to give you an example to try now. I would like you to try and answer this question. Qu'est-ce que tu as fait au collège hier? What? Is it that you have done at school yesterday? What did you do at school yesterday? Now, be careful with this one um, because, again, you might be tempted to say, yesterday at, uh, yesterday in school I went to maths, but they wouldn't really say I went to maths. Instead, think about a place that you might have gone in school and that will make more sense. So you could talk about the canteen, the library, the playground, the music room, whichever one you know how to say. Um yeah, so if you could leave me your um, responses in the comments, I will give you feedback. Merci, au revoir.